ups and the downs. So the, the breakthrough day was uh, the day you met a very uh, powerful person in the industry who, who was also nice enough to mentor new talent. Yeah, I mean, exactly. I mean, this was like, probably my, my way of getting faster to the uh, exposed to directors and, and producers of this town. And, and Rami, because you mentioned that you both came from Germany, yeah. uh, is your independently, is, uh, is there a, a similar uh, story? Did, did you also work for Hans? Uh, yeah, I did actually. Um, my story is a little bit different. I uh, I actually did go to music school uh, in the U.S. For, for, <laughs> for me, it was um, I, I just like the U.S., so I always wanted to be here. Um, so once I finished high school, I decided to go to music school here. Um, and then from there, I ended up coming to L.A. Um, and, uh, uh, Which music school? Uh, Berkeley College of Music, Berkeley. which I think is a wonderful school. I, I learned a lot. Um, I don't know how much about film music, but it, it's just in general, just music knowledge. It just I really got a lot out of that school. Um, and then, uh, same thing, just by coincidence, and just how things happen, I, I, I ended up at, at uh, what was then called Leading Adventures and now Remote Control. And then um, one of my big mentors then actually was Klaus. I actually ended up working with Klaus. How long was it from the time that, that either of you met Klaus and, and were at Media Ventures? How long was it from that point to the point where you actually had an opportunity to, to uh, score them? It's, you know, I get asked that question all the time, and I think, I mean, for me it was, I think, Years. It's like a, a gradual step where you. Um, it's fast. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, I get always asked the question: How long does it? Uh, because I started out as an, you know, as an assistant and yeah. just, you know doing technical work and then gradually doing music. And I always get asked the question: How long does it take from an assistant yeah. to become a composer? And I, I never really know how to answer it because it works yeah. different. Yeah, I was going to say. Everybody. You noticed I didn't ask you that. I asked you how it worked for you. <laughs> right. But I think you make a good point. That's how it worked for you. If right. someone else, it may be five years or exactly. seven years or, or six months. You just exactly. never know. Yeah. But, but in your case, that's, that seems remarkably uh, fast. And, and for you, around the same? Yeah, I mean, I uh, was never Hans assistant. Um, um, spared me that. <laughs> I tortured me enough to know what that means. Um, <laughs> but no, I made the coffee in the kitchen for a year. And, um, uh, but I think it was about similar to, I think, attitude. Um, I have this honestly with Germans about that is the opposite, because I'm a kid's here. Um, is that they come here and say, well, you know, give me something to do, I'm ready. Yeah. I worked like 10 years, 20 years in Germany, or whatever, mm -hmm. I'm totally ready now. I think it was the attitude that I, um, same with them, completely gave up mm -hmm. what, what we, where we came from, and we were willing to do that, and uh, I came here. No, that's not in my mind. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I came here and, and I was ready to, you know, and I did make coffee and, and clean yeah. the kitchen. And um, when sometimes people came to visit in there, uh, they asked me, so what do you do? And I told them my background and said, wow, we did all this in Germany, why do you make coffee here? And I think it was quite important. I, yeah, I, I particularly love stories like this. The, the film that I just worked on, there was an actor whose job on the film essentially was to be an assistant and make coffee wants to be a movie star, and he was just hurting inside the whole time, and I sat him down one time and told him about the first film I worked on, and I said, you know, you have an incredible film director here, it's, it's an honor, it's a humbling thing, it's good for you, trust me, just make the freaking coffee, and, <laughs> and I'll be happy, it'll, it'll be happy because this, that there's some nobility in the fact that you're working on a beautiful piece of art here, and, and you're serving the role we need you to serve, calm down, chill out, do it, you know. Uh, your path, uh, Deborah. I moved uh, out to LA from the San Francisco Bay Area where I grew up um, uh, to go to USC as an undergraduate in uh, composition. And um, I went to USC specifically because I, I figured out at about 17 that I wanted to do this. So, I so at 17, you knew you wanted to be a film composer? Yeah. Okay. Um, before that, I had. Writing some, I was really involved in theater, and I, I wrote some music for, um, for theatrical productions. Like my high school's production of *A Midsummer Night's Dream* was like the first thing, you know. And I just, it was really not really from a film background, but just a, you know, um, music with a visual mm -hmm. aspect. You know, um, my sister did a lot of choreography and stuff like that, so music was always really visual, and um, so. I went to USC to 
that's basically a, just a, um, you know, for the four years, it's really sort of an academic music degree. Um, it's, and then my senior year, I did the film scoring program. Um, but while I was there, I scored a lot of student films. You know, it's a great film school there. So, um, um, I mean, and you know. Have any I, of those, have any of those directors of those student films gone on to have <laughs> careers in Yeah, Hollywood? yeah, actually one who um, ended up, he was my housemate in college. Um, he was the only person who had original scores written for his Super 8 um, <laughs> non-dialogue, like, you know, film 101 films, you know. <laughs> so, um, you know, I lived upstairs from him and we would, you know, use this very, very technology that makes me feel very old right now, um, you know, to, to do these things. And um, and I've scored um, two movies with him. Who's that? Um, uh, his name is Joe Nussbaum. And I right. um, uh, think he's got, an, got another one coming up. <laughs> um, so, so that's... Um, Sydney White and Sleepover, which were sort of like teenage type movies. Um, those are the ones I did with them. And um, so um, I was always kind of doing a combination. When I got out of school, I was always doing a combination of things where like it would be like a really small independent thing with my name on the title card or whatever, you know, like the shorts or the, or the indies that you've never heard of. And then I was always sort of simultaneously helping on something, you know, that people have heard of. You know, I worked with, um, earlier on, I worked with John Ottman, and um, just a few years ago, I started working quite often with Danny Elfman, which has basically been an incredible, um, you know, I guess he'd be like my, the equivalent to their uh, Hans and, Zimmer. And in what capacity were you working with Danny? Pardon? In what capacity were you working with Um, I basically, it, um, it was all <laughs> lucky for it was all really composing music. Um, nowadays, um, you know, like <coughs> the schedules get so crazy, you know that, um, and oftentimes they change something on him schedule-wise or whatever. So they were movies where I I actually had the opportunity to write some music. So um, that sort of threw me into the big leagues, yeah. you know, at least for one cue or, you know, so I just have little glimpses of it all the time. Would you say that at UCL, U, USC, um, there were connections that you made through through your time in USC, but, but, but the mentor that really you would credit would be someone from outside USC? Yeah, I mean... Um, were there business connections you made while you were there that, that other than the one you mentioned? Not the really, yeah. not really. I mean, um, you know, and sometimes people ask me, like, are you better off going to an LA school than let's say Berkeley, you know, because you can get started with your networking or whatever. And um, I, I really don't think that's, I mean, I think if you're just surrounded in a musical environment, it, it, you know, you're not out there like making an impression on people in <coughs> business. By the way, I was, I was not exactly um, scientific in my uh, study of the number of women composers. Do you have a, a better idea of how many women composers are in the top ranks of composing for film and TV right now? Unfortunately, I'm like the worst person to ask about this stuff. Are there names of some ones you know um, that, uh, that I can I, add to Rachel Portman, so I have at least one more name? Um, I mean, I was just going to say I wrote Rachel Portman a fan letter when I was like a senior in college or something. 